Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, January 29th. My goodness, January is almost in the books already. Amazing how time flies. Uh, it's a nice chilly day here in southeastern Pennsylvania, but the sun is shining and uh, life is good. So I've got a lot to talk about today. I went to the uh, Midwestern Tool Collecting Association meeting uh, yesterday, and I'll tell you about that trip. It was a lot of fun. Really had a great time. Uh, but first, I want to get started here, and I want to talk a little bit about my pipe and, and tobacco. Uh, today, I'm going to smoke a Falcon. Vastly underrated pipes, in my opinion. I've got a couple of them. I, I do enjoy them. Um, but I just got a new bowl for this one. So, had the original bowl here, and you can see it's it's much smaller, and I prefer a a larger bowl than that so I picked this up for I think it was around thirty dollars on smoking pipes and you know, in case you don't know Falcons are these modular pipes where the bowl just kind of screws off and you're left with the frame a couple of nice things about this I mean one is they, they smoke well they, they're they're really pretty reasonable pipes for uh, for me at least you know you can learn to smoke any pipe so it's not it's not so much that the pipe smokes well but I can smoke it well and I think most people can uh, the other is that this is completely rinsable I mean you could take the bowl off and you can take this to the sink and run hot water through it and clean it out so really easy to keep clean and maintain and what I've started doing I've been playing with this idea and you know Falcon recommended it and uh, a lot of folks do it but Hopefully you can see there's a little piece of pipe cleaner curled up in the bottom there. You just cut off a piece and, and you know bend it into a ring small enough so that it fits below the threads. And that just sits in there and soaks up the, uh, the goop. And I think the one problem with the Falcon pipe over other pipes, over Briar or, or uh, Meerschaum or Corncop for that matter, is that you know, this, this metal frame is obviously not absorbent at all. Uh, no matter how much you smoke this, you're never going to get cake at the bottom of it. So it does tend to collect juice, uh, moisture from, from the burning tobacco. So putting that little piece of pipe cleaner down there just gives that somewhere to go. Just absorbs that stuff and, you know, when you clean the pipe out, you just toss it away. Wipe out the inside of the bowl if you want to. You can rinse it out. Uh, keep the bowl clean as you would for any other pipe and you know, ream it as needed and everything and they're they're great pipes and uh, values too I, I think uh, I this is a, an estate but I think you can get them new for like thirty forty dollars so well worth looking into and I've got a video on Falcon pipes in the distant past but if I can find it I'll put a link to it uh, down down below in case you're interested and what I'm going to put in the pipe is some Cornell and Deal crooner. Yes, I got away with smoking this on Friday night during the live stream. The wife did not even notice it. And uh, I had some yesterday as I was traveling. For those of you that don't know, crooner is the one blend my wife does not let me smoke. And it's funny because most guys say, oh, my wife loves crooner. You know, crooner is a it's Cornell and Deal blend. It's got uh, deer tongue in it which is an interesting, if you've never had deer tongue, it's a hard to describe uh, flavor. It's an herb that's added to the, to the tobacco. And I get very strong vanilla hints off of it, but it's also got like a minty green edge to it. It's hard to explain. Anyway, most wives seem to love it when their husbands smoke crooner because it smells good. My wife hates it. She says it smells awful. It smells like burning wet burning wood or something like that and you know she'll let me smoke a lot of Kia blend she'll let me smoke straight Burleys on a bookshop con she didn't even notice when I'm smoking on a bookshop but the minute I light up crooner around her and she's very consistent with it, put that out I can't stand that crooner so <clears throat> but I got away with smoking it here down here in the basement uh, on Friday night and we're gonna try again and see if we get in trouble today and it is a wonderful blend so we got that loaded up and I'll tell you a bit about it as we go along but one thing I've noticed 
is that the blend seems a bit different from last time I tried it. And that might be me, because it has been over a year since I've had this. And I've talked about this before, you know, tobacco being a natural product, it changes over time. You can't control the weather and the soil. Well, you can control the soil, I guess, but from crop to crop, tobacco is going to be different. So blends are going to vary over time. And then we're going to vary over time because our taste change. And of course, blends will vary over time because companies change what they put into it. So who knows what the difference is here? It's probably me. Just want to get this well lit so that I can talk. There we go. So if you've been, I'm oh, sorry, I kicked you there. If you've been following me on Instagram, or if you if you were on the Friday night live stream, you know I had to have some dental work done uh, this past week. Last week, I uh, had two molars extracted, and it was a I hate to say painful because it didn't hurt at all happening. A uh, bit traumatic experience because the the way my roots went, so the roots were supposed to go straight up and down and my roots go like this, so they were like gripping the jawbone. So to get the teeth out, he had to actually cut the teeth into parts and take them out root by root. Uh, it's two consecutive molars on the top right here. They had to come out because they had been root canal, they had been re-root canal, and they were starting to uh, abscess again, and it just was not worth trying to save them. So I'm going to get, he put a uh, bone graft in, and at some point in the future I'm going to get implants in, uh, which by all accounts will be no different than having the teeth there in the first place. Take care of your teeth, guys. It's important. And I largely have. It just, you know, this stuff happens. It's part of getting old. Older. Mm. This crooner is really a nice blend. Um, the burly goodness, and then that, that deer tongue just adds another dimension to it. It's uh, being hard to describe, but... Creamy vanilla kind of, but not like goopy aromatic vanilla. and having some coffee with it. So, <clears throat> had an adventure yesterday. I love adventures. <laughs> Haven't had one since, uh, well, since the Columbus Pipe Show. Uh, that was my last big road trip. Uh, and uh, yesterday I went to the Midwestern Tool Collectors Association meeting, which was held in York, Pennsylvania. It wasn't a meeting, it was a tool meet. And, there was also a tool auction associated with it. I didn't stay for that. I looked through the catalog and realized that there, it was it was a collection of either things I wasn't interested in or things that would make me go broke. And uh, I was pretty tired by, by that point. So to get there at 7 when the show started, I needed to get up at 4, get out the door by 5. And I did that and got there at 7 and barely remember getting there. But uh, it had, So I was expecting a lot more folks in the parking lot because usually there's like a tailgating type thing going on. <clears throat> there were, I think, maybe four tables out there, three or four people. Uh, spent a little bit of time out there <clears throat> after I did the inside show uh, talking to some of the guys and... Uh, 
picked up a couple of coping saws at the at the outdoor show. Really, uh, yeah, coping saws are not that expensive, but these were like twenty, thirty dollar value. Uh, got them for five dollars each, so that was nice. Um, I have well, I'm not going to get into coping saws because uh, that could be a whole twenty minute easily. But the show is great, um, and I got some pictures I'm going to, I'll talk you through. If you don't like tools, you might want to jump to uh, post pictures, but uh, I think most of you guys like tools enough and like these kind of meetups enough that you'll enjoy these pictures. So let me, let me just kind of go through them here. So this is a shot of the inside of the, the, the tool meet, and uh yeah, anybody that's been to a smaller pipe show or anything will recognize this kind of layout. It's it's at a hotel. It's in a ballroom, and <clears throat> I don't know how many tables there were. I'd, I'd say roughly there were 30, 40 tables, something like that. Some of them were sparsely populated with things. You can see the table in the foreground there had you know ten or twelve items on it. Some of them were densely populated with things where there were boxes of stuff that you could root through and, and all of that. Uh, and this gentleman jumped into that picture. Just I, I waited for people to walk by, and I said, "Okay, now I can take the picture." And he literally jumped in there, so so he gets to be famous because of that. Uh, here's another shot of the show, uh, different different angle, and uh, yeah, you, you can get an idea of the kind of stuff that I was looking at, the kind of uh, people that were there, and you know, plenty of opportunity to chat. To people about tools and, and interact and learn a bit. Some really cool items, and uh, this is a picture, you know, close up of one of the tables. It had some really neat saw type stuff on it. And <clears throat> what I want to draw your attention to is that large panel saw there in the middle. If you look closely at it, there are teeth on the top of the saw, which is really kind of interesting. So. So the part of the saw that you would expect to be toothed is a uh, rip cut panel saw. And the top half or so of the saw is uh, cross cut teeth. I have no idea. It, there, there were no, it was, it's an unsigned piece, so I don't know who made this. Uh, I've never seen one quite like this. I have no idea what the utility would be other than the obvious of you can flip it over and cross cut, but the handle would be in the wrong orientation. It'd be hard to use. But uh, yeah, interesting saw. Never, never saw one like that. Never saw one like that. No pun intended. Oh boy. Let's see. Oh, this was this was one of the highlights for me. This is a not full set, but but a rather uh, rather large set of Stanley uh, 750 pre-war 750 chisels. I I love these chisels. I have a set of four. Uh, the, the the basics. Uh, the one inch three-quarter, half-inch, and quarter-inch, uh, which are the most used chisels, and, and I, I love them. Uh, this is not a complete set. There's only eight here, I think, and <clears throat> Stanley actually made 11 in total. The They made from two-inch down to quarter-inch and quarter-inch steps, and then between one-inch and a quarter-inch, they filled in the, th the uh, eighth-inch jumps. So, yeah, a total of 11, but uh, these, these are very nice, and uh, that set was being sold as a set for I think three hundred and twenty-five dollars, something like that. And honestly, it's it, it's well worth it. Uh, if if you like your chisels, if you like history, and if you like good steel, uh, they're excellent chisels. Uh, this was interesting. Uh, th this is actually a wagon jack of all things. Uh, that 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 wooden structure there in the in the, in the center. Uh, a wag uh, wagon jack is used, as you might expect, to jack up your wagon if you were to be changing your wagon wheel. And uh, yeah, beautifully preserved, uh, probably somewhat restored, but uh, really nice. And you can see there's a patent below that. So that was a patented wagon jack. Uh, very cool. It's just I love this kind of stuff. I'm obviously never going to need a wagon jack, but <laughs> I just love looking at them and learning about them. Uh, this is an example of one of the exhibits. This was an exhibit on um, this guy, uh, Epi McCulloch's uh, patent for a plane that was an improvement on the Stanley 45 combination plane. And I've got a close-up of that. Just a beautiful, beautiful plane. You can see the, 
This is put in a display box, uh, obviously a very rare, very valuable tool. And uh, the combination planes could do all sorts of things. They could cut uh, rabbits on the edge of a board. They could cut, uh, they could plow uh, dados. They could cut moldings. Uh, they have lots of different blades, lots of different ways to configure them. Very, very complicated planes. And you can see some of the plane irons there back behind the handle, just kind of sticking up in a, in a little compartment back there. And uh, so th this was, Stanley made the 45, this fellow McCulloch improved on that and patented it. And then if I remember the story right, Stanley bought that patent and they came out with the number 55 uh, plane, which was their improved version. And lastly, uh, I think lastly, we here have here a display on the development of the automatic ratcheting screwdriver. Again, if you're not into tools, you're not going to like this. And in fact, even if you're into tools, you might not be into ratcheting screwdrivers, <laughs> but just very cool. Fun, fun to spend some time with that. This is my, uh, <clears throat> my big purchase from the day. I got myself a Distin dovetail saw. Uh, haven't had a chance to look closely at this and date it, but it's probably, probably early 20th century, I guess. Uh, so 19, early 1900s. Uh, you can see that the ruler is a six inch, so it's it's about nine inches or so, maybe a little less than that. And uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm really happy to have this. Now, why did I buy a distant dovetail saw? So uh, this is just just the other side of the saw. It's in pretty good shape, um, and I will use this. I will sharpen it and make it a user. So why did I buy it? Well, here's my dilemma on the. Uh, Right hand, left hand side there, you see my uh, Lai Nielsen saws at the top. There's a dovetail saw, and then below that is a uh, carcass saw. So the dovetail saw is for cutting dovetails, the carcass saw is for cross cutting pieces. And what's missing at the bottom, where that question mark is, is a tenon saw. I do have a tenon saw, and if you look at the right hand side now, you can see at the bottom there is my distant tenon saw. Uh, Beautiful example, works great, I, I love it, I use it uh, anytime I need to, to cut tenons. But I had, so my set, and you only need those three, you need a dovetail saw, a carcass saw, and a uh, tenon saw for joinery. So I had the full set, but two were Lai Nielsen and one was distant. So I need to, needed to either buy a Lai Nielsen tenon saw or buy the distant dovetail saw and carcass saw. Well. The obvious thing to do is to buy the Lai Nielsen, but I went and bought the distance, so now I only need two to complete both sets, and you know darn well I'm going to I'm going to try to do that. <laughs> so, yeah, that was uh, that was my my day. Um, stayed at the show, got there at seven, stayed till around uh, eleven, a little bit before eleven, and uh, the auction hall opened up. But I looked through the catalog, and like I said, there wasn't anything I was terribly interested in so I decided to take off at that point and went and had a nice uh, hearty but not heart, heart healthy breakfast at a local diner called Lundy's I believe uh, if you follow me on Instagram I put some pictures up including a picture of the, the breakfast uh, thickest piece of scrapple I've ever seen what wonderful and and drove home By the time I got home, I was dog tired. Uh, didn't do much, having been up since four. Uh, might have been guilty of an afternoon nap. And then we had some dinner. Uh, read for a while, my wife watched Hallmark. And then at 10 o'clock, I switched over and watched Svengoli, uh, which I had recorded. And by the time that was over, I was almost asleep. And uh, here I am this morning. So. Yeah, it was a great day. Had a lot of fun and uh, really enjoy things like that. You know, whether it's it's pipes or, or tools, uh, just, just getting out and getting together with like-minded folks and see examples of things that you've, you've only read about and or, or, or examples of things you'd never thought you'd see, like a wagon jack. And yeah, just fun. <clears throat> I wish... The one thing that I... That I, I'm, I, I shouldn't say I'm disappointed in, but... I think would be really cool is 
you know, the pipe shows that I've been to, and I've only been to the smaller ones. I haven't been to the Vegas show. I know that's different. Um, and the tool shows that I've been to have all been like that, where, you you know, you just go in, you mingle, you look at things, you buy things. And, and you know, there's times to socialize, but it's nothing. There's no, like, presentations. Uh, if you go to fly fishing or fly tying shows, there's all that stuff, and then there's presentations as well. And... I like the presentations. It would be really cool to have a presentation on, like, you know, Stanley rulers or, or, or the, the history of the ratcheting screwdriver or whatever. Uh, and at pipe shows, it would be really cool to have presentations on, you know, the history of different pipe makers or <clears throat> improvements in pipe making, uh, how, you know, the Falcons are different from briar pipes or, you know, whatever. Yeah, I, I think that would be a lot of fun to have those kind of presentations. And of course, you'd need people to give them. But, yeah, anybody involved in smaller pipe shows, something to consider. Well, folks, um, don't have a lot else to chat about today doing some some shop work uh, maybe this afternoon or maybe not um, got some Sunday stuff to do still and uh, yeah probably gonna take it easy and prepare for work tomorrow got a fairly full week this week there will not be a live stream this week uh, I've decided to take the this Friday off because my wife is probably going to Pittsburgh on Sunday, I think, so I wanted to be able to spend some time with her, maybe go out to dinner or something. So, no live stream on Friday. Everett Young is going to be doing a live stream uh, in my place, so I highly recommend you go check out Everett. Put a link to his channel below, and link to whatever else I promised earlier, if I can remember what it was and if I can find it. It was the Falcon Pipe video. Yeah, I'll try to find that as well. And just for the heck of it, I'll throw in a link to the Midwestern Tool Collectors Association in case any of you are interested. Uh, they have these kinds of meetings throughout the, uh, they're called Midwestern, but they obviously get to the East Coast. Uh, I think it's it's throughout sort of the Northeast to Midwest corridor. So, uh, and they have an annual meeting that I've never been to, but would like to get to some year. Um, just a lot of fun. If you're into tools at all, you might want to consider Membership is like 30 bucks a year, and you get a quarterly magazine, which is fantastic. Um, and it supports a, a great group. All right, folks, so look for those links below. And with that, I'm going to draw this video to a close. So I hope you all have a fantastic week. Enjoy your Sunday. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Mm -hmm.